Welcome to The Cutting Edge with Dr. Larry Allison. Stay tuned as Dr. Allison delivers the truth of the Word of God in simplicity and understanding that will impact your life. And now, Dr. Larry Allison. Lift up the Word and repeat after me. I believe this is the Word of God. I believe what God says because it is impossible for God to lie. Now say that last part. It is impossible for God to lie. Do you believe God's word? Turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 17, verse 22. Proverbs 17, 22. And we're going to read this together. You all got your Bibles? You ready? Ready, set, read. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. This scripture tells us that there is a direct connection between your health and your attitude. What is in your head will affect your body. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now this is written, this letter is written to the church. This is not written to the Jews who do not believe in Jesus at this particular time. It's written to the Jews and Gentiles who have received Jesus. It's written to a representative of the body of Christ. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that this scripture says here that it is God's will that we would prosper. Now, prosperity is not just money, although money is a part of prosperity. I have had money, and I have not had money. And just in case you're curious, it's a whole lot more fun to have it than to not have it. And God wants us to have abundance in every area. He wants us to have overflow. But prosperity is not just money. Some of the most prosperous people I have ever met in my life, money was irrelevant to them. See, when it says prosper in all things, that means prosper in your personality, prosper in, in your lifestyle with your children, po prosper in your personality, prosper in your attitude, prosper in all things. It includes finances, but it's not exclusive of everything else but finances. Are you following me? Now follow through on this. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in how many things? All things and, what's the next phrase? Be in health. So prosperity without health is almost irrelevant because you can have all the money in the world, but if you're hooked up to a ventilator and you can't get out of the room, then that money will not benefit you, except maybe just buy you more days on the respirator. But it's not going to allow you to live your life to the fullest. So God's plan is that we prosper and be in good health. But look at the rest of it. Just as, and that could also be translated in the same way as, your soul prospers. Now let's lock on to this. It's God's will that you have prosperity in your life. It's God's will that you have health. But it is connected to you are to prosper and you are to be in good health just as, in the same way as, your soul prospers. Now, your soul is a part of who you are. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, you are a three-part being. You are spirit, soul, and body. Your soul is your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions. 
Now think about this. Your soul is your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions. So if we want to prosper physically and be healthy, walk in health physically, then we need to prosper in the realm of the soul. And if the soul has these four parts, mind, will, intellect, and emotions, then how do we get those four parts to prosper? That's the key. So the first thing is the mind. You get the mind into the realm of prosperity by renewing the mind daily. Now, who is it that renews the mind daily? You do. We do. We, we are each responsible to renew our own mind each day. And the Bible tells us that the way we renew our mind is through the washing of the Word of God. We take the Word of God and we wash our minds with it. And the way we do that is by reading and meditating on God's Word. Now, how often do you do that? Daily. Now, somebody may say, well, I, I really study a lot about God. In fact, I've got books by Brother Copeland and Joyce Meyer, and, and I've even got a couple of your books, Pastor, and, and I like to read these books. Let me tell you something. There is no substitute for the Word of God. It is good to take someone's book that helps explain some things but that is not a substitute for the Word of God. You will not find a scripture in the Bible that says we renew our mind by reading Life is in the Blood by Dr. Larry Allison. You're not going to find that scripture in there. And, and I, it would honor me, and I think it would really be great if you would read one of my books. But I'll tell you what, that's not how you renew your mind. You renew your mind by the washing of the Word of God, this book this book. All right. Your mind, your will. Now, how do you cause your will to be prosperous? Your will will be prosperous if your will aligns with the will of God. You've got to start wanting what God wants and be willing to walk in his will. Now, Jesus, when he came to this earth, Jesus was God. You know that. John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then in verse 14, it tells us that the Word became flesh and dwelt among men. So we know that Jesus came to earth. He became flesh. He took on the Son of God mode, but he was still, he was still God. But he set aside all of his godly uh, attributes when he was here on the earth. Because, after all, Jesus lived without sin. What kind of a deal would it have been if God lived without sin? Well, as my daughter would say, duh. I mean, of course God would live without sin. But Jesus proved that man could live without sin. That sin could be defeated. And he became the perfect sacrifice. But when Jesus, remember he was, he was praying, he was in the garden, and he was at the point where they were getting ready to arrest him and execute him. And Jesus, basically, he said, God, I, I want to talk to you about your plan. That you See, Jesus knew all things. The Bible says Jesus knew all things. He knew he was going to be executed. And just before it happened, he wasn't really excited about it. And kind of paraphrased, he was saying, look, you know, can we get a second opinion on this? Is there maybe some other way, you know, that we can get the sins of the world uh, taken away without me having to be nailed to a block of wood? I mean, is there some way? But then, but then here's what he said. He said, nevertheless, it's not my will, but it's your will that we're going to do. And then Jesus didn't go to the cross kicking and screaming, saying, well, I'm going to do it, but I don't like it. No, he didn't do that. He submitted his will to the will of the Father, and then he was obedient, and he did what the Father wanted without complaining. Now, if you're going to do what God wants you to do, 
If you're going to align your will with him, let me give you a great word of advice. Quit complaining about it. Submit your will to God's will. See, look, if, if God says in his word that you're not to abuse your body, and you are abusing your body, then one day you get this revelation, God doesn't want me to abuse my body. And so you decide to quit abusing your body, to align your will with his, then just do it. But don't song and dance about it for the rest of your life. Just submit to God, do what he wants, be willing. See, willing means that you're putting his will above your will and you're submitting your will to him. And you're doing it with joy. See, the Bible says that God loves those that are willing and obedient. Big difference between obedient and willing and obedient. God wants us to be willing and obedient. He, he wants us to submit with joy. All right? So our mind, our will, and our intellect. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your intellect. Now, some people say, well, how much I know really doesn't matter. God's not concerned about my smarts, about my school learning. God's not, he's not concerned about that. In fact, all these people getting educated, if they don't know Jesus, we're just sending them to hell smart. Well, you know, there's some truth in that. Sometimes you can just be an educated idiot. I've met some. Have you? Why are you guys all looking at me? Come on now, hey. <laughs> there's a time to look around, you know what I'm saying? But... Our intellect, our knowledge does make a difference. Hosea 4.6, God made this very interesting statement. He said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. He didn't say for a lack of good looks. He didn't say for a lack of a good attitude. He didn't say for a lack of wisdom. He said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Now, Many people don't have knowledge about things because they ignore them. For example, when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, when it comes to healing, when it comes to speaking in tongues, when it comes to prophecy, when it comes to uh, laying hands on the sick, and, and all of the types of things that are in the New Testament that are kind of a, a little bizarre sometimes. I mean, Jesus did some things that were strange your Lord and Savior, the King of Kings, when he was here on earth, he talked to trees. And they, listened. and they listened. He spoke to the wind. He, he went out and he spoke to the waves. Now, I tell you, you know, you, if you, somebody sees you down at Walmart talking to a tree in the parking lot, you know, they may think strange things about you. But let me tell you something. Uh, there are people who think the things of God are strange and weird because they have never studied the Word of God to find out that God has the gifts of the Holy Spirit here for the church. What have they done? They have ignored the teaching. See, the church I grew up in, good church, but the church I grew up in, I got saved in, but this particular church did not teach anything about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They were ignored. Now, if something is ignored, ignore is the root word for ignorant. You know, you, you become ignorant about things that you don't know that you have ignored. And so we don't want to ignore God's word. We want to know God's word, see? And we don't want to perish for a lack of knowledge. What does that mean? Lack of knowledge of the stock market? Lack of knowledge of, of, of what? No, a lack of knowledge of God's Word. Now, if you want to get into God's Word and find out knowledge from Him, and if you want to get wisdom and align your will with Him, then there is a book out on the market. It's called the B-I-B-L-E, 
That's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, my B-I-B-L-E. All right, now let me tell you something. This book, if you, if you read this book, you will find out what the will of God is. Some people say, well, I'd like to align my will with God's will, but I just don't know what God's will is. Well, have you read the book? I'd like to know more about God. I'd like to have more knowledge about God, but how can I have more knowledge about God? Well, have you read the book? See, this book has 66 chapters in it, 66 books within this book. And each person who wrote into this book over centuries and millennia, each author was inspired by the Spirit of God. Now think about this. You have an entity that created the universe. You have a being that spoke and light came into existence. And that being rules all of the galaxies. And he, by his Holy Spirit, inspired men to write a book. And we wonder why we don't understand the will of God and we don't understand God's plan for the universe. Let me ask you something. Have you read the book? Now, I know everyone in this room owns the book, but have you read the book? We had a class one time called, it was Basic Minister's Training and Faith Bible Training Center. This was several years ago. And we had the room fill up with, with people who were either licensed, ordained, or studying so that they could be licensed or ordained so that they could eventually at some point in time go into the ministry. I passed out a piece of paper. I taught this class several times. I only did this once. Uh, I figured I, I found out I lost too many friends, so I didn't do it anymore. But I had one sheet of paper, and I had two columns on it. And the first column had the numbers 1 to 33, and the next one had 34 to 66, and there was a line by each one. I passed it out, and the heading up here was called Books of the Bible. And so you got all these people studying for the ministry. This is their manual. They're planning on teaching the rest of their life from this manual. And I said, all right, now, list the 66 books of the Bible. I didn't do that anymore. Class attendance dropped off. Um, but let me tell you something. I don't think there was but one or two, and it may not even been that, in the entire class that knew the books of the Bible. And we're talking ministers or people going into the ministry. Now, that lets me know that if that's the way it is in the ministry, then how much, and these are people that are going to be spending their life teaching out of this book, then how much less probably the average person knows about the Word of God. Jesus taught the Word. Jesus is the Word. And through the Word, we gain knowledge. And Hosea 4, 6 says, My people perish, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Is intellect okay? Well, yeah. You know, you can't just become an ed educated idiot, and there are educated idiots. You, you can't become so philosophical. I've met some people who were so philosophical you couldn't talk to them. Good morning. They go, morning. The time of day when you, you think, <laughs> let's just talk, you know. Have you ever been with somebody that was so analytical that you couldn't carry on a conversation? Beloved, I want you to prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. What is prosperity of soul? Prosperity of your mind. Prosperity of your will. Prosperity of your intellect. And prosperity in the realm of your emotions. Listen, emotions are one of those things you can either have too many of or not enough. And sometimes I think that the reason husbands and wives need to be one is because one of the two has too many and one of the two has not enough. And so when you, <laughs> when you put them together, there's a balance there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you've got to get your emotions prosperous. All of us. 
male and female. We need, we need to have our emotions prosperous. You must, we must be in control of our emotions. We should not allow circumstances to control our emotions. We shouldn't allow Aunt Eunice at, at the family reunion control our emotions. You shouldn't allow money to control your emotions. You shouldn't allow other people to manipulate and control your emotions. One part of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. In Galatians 5, and 23, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. What you have been given, what you've been empowered with by God, love, joy, peace, and goes right on down the list. Nine parts of the fruit of the Spirit. Number nine is self-control. Self-control means you control you self. You do not allow someone else to control you. You control you. Somebody says, <laughs> no, nobody made you do anything, Jack. Come on now. And I wasn't referring to you, Deacon Jack. I was just meant, <laughs> but just a figure of speech. I'll say it over. Nobody, <laughs> John, all right, whatever. But, but the reality is self-control. Now, I don't mean self-control gritting your teeth. I mean self-control from the inside out. We, did you know that the Bible tells us that we can train ourselves? That you have the ability, with the nine parts of the fruit of the Spirit, you have the ability to decide whether you're going to walk in the fruit of the Spirit or not. Love? Somebody may say, well, I can't help myself. I, no, hey, you decide if you're going to love or not. Love is a decision. Joy, you decide if you're going to be joyful or not. Somebody says, well, I can't be joyful. If you had to go through what I had to go through, if you had to live with what I have to live with, you, hey, snap out of it, Jack. <laughs> Joy is not based by your surroundings. Look at Paul and Silas in the book of Acts. Stripped, whipped, beaten, in stocks, backs bleeding, thrown into a pile of sewage in the center of a dark, stinky Roman dungeon and waiting for morning to be executed. And they didn't whine and bellyache. And they didn't say, oh, I'm enjoying this. They didn't do that either. You know, they didn't act like a flake. But the scripture says that they didn't let the circumstances rule over their joy. And they sang songs, and they prayed. How could they do that? They did that because they had learned. See, Paul made this interesting statement. He said, I have learned to be content in whatever state I am in. He learned it. Contentment is something that you learn, and it, then it's something that you decide you're going to do. You know, you can learn something and then decide not to walk in what you learn. Listen, if you don't walk in what you learn, you're going to end up stepping in something you don't want to step in. All right. I think what I want you to understand today is that the body cannot be separated. Your, your flesh cannot be separated from your soul. Your, your flesh cannot be separated from your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions. In other words... So the soul goes, so the prosperity and the body goes. Now, anytime you teach on anything like this, what happens is the spirit of the enemy comes in and he tries to condemn you. Because if you have something that's not right, then uh, the, the tendency is for the devil to whisper in your ear, well, you've really messed up. And if you haven't got it right by now, I guess you never will. Look at your failures. And then you just spiral into more failures. In our health and healing class this last Thursday, and every Thursday at 1 o'clock we have a class on health and healing. It's free. It's open to the public. It lasts 
one hour. It's not a healing service. It is a healing class where we discuss and teach on healing for one hour. And we had a, a lady in our class who uh, came in with a, with a walker. And several of you know this lady, and a wonderful lady. And we got to talking about condemnation that can come upon a person who needs healing. Now, I think what we need to understand is there are people who need healing that it's obvious. There are people who need healing that it's obvious. We're talking about people in wheelchairs, people with walkers, somebody that has an oxygen uh, hookup and a tank with them, various things. There, there are physical things you can look at them and you can say, ah, that person needs healing. And she said, and she related in the class, and I thought this was very, very good, that many times when she's in a meeting and, and people are talking about healing, that there's pressure on people who have an obvious healing need, there's pressure on them to perform. In fact, she says when any time she ever comes forward for prayer, everybody cheers. And that's okay. I mean, I understand. But it puts pressure on her that maybe somebody else that has something that's hidden away. See, and this is what I discovered this last uh, week in our Wednesday night message when, when I had everyone stand up or raise their hand who had something in their body that they wanted corrected, almost everybody in the room, almost everybody had something they wanted changed in their physical body. But the, the devil will try to make you think that you have messed up and the reason you are sick is because of sin in your life or whatever. Listen, just forget all that garbage and think of it this way. As knowledge comes to me and the Holy Spirit gives me revelation and understanding concerning that knowledge, my job is not to look back at past failures. My job is to start applying the new knowledge that I've learned and not give up on God. And I've said this over and over again. And I'm going to say it one more time. There are things that got me six months ago that are not getting me now. Because I am growing in faith, growing in knowledge and understanding of God's Word. And I'll tell you, there are things that are getting me right now that in six months they're not going to get me anymore. Because I'm increasing in the Word and increasing in faith daily. And I'm not looking back. I've had failures in the past and so have you. But the reality is I'm not going to look at the failures. I'm going to look at the future in God. Today's teaching in its entirety is available on CD for $7 or DVD for $11 by calling our toll-free number 877-919-9778. Our operators will be happy to assist you. For additional materials by Dr. Larry Allison, you can log on to the internet at www.faithman.org. Can a believer really defeat the devil? Is it possible to live free from the fears and worries of this world? Dr. Larry Allison answers these questions with a resounding yes in his book, Life is in the Blood. In this walk of life, you need a lighthouse for guidance to the life God wants you to have. Walk on the Water Faith Church. An awesome time for kids. Powerful praise and worship. Dynamic messages. Join the Lighthouse family. Look for the church with the Lighthouse. Walk on the Water Faith Church. If you have enjoyed this teaching and would like to help support this ministry, please send your tax-deductible gift to Larry Allison Ministries, P.O. Box 880, Osage Beach, Missouri, 65065, USA. Or log on to faithman.org and place your secure donation online. Thank you for your support. Your gift does make a difference. May God bless you. Thank you for joining us today and tune in next time for The Cutting Edge.